I've challenged myself to rank every single Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters character. We have 100 characters here. This is pretty much every single character who made at least one duel. There might be some fodder characters I've missed stuff, but for the most part, all of these characters, they did enough to get themselves on this list. Double S tier, the most ultimate duelists of all time. You have to be on their level or you have no chance of defeating them in a duel. They're the creme de la creme, if you will. An S tier duelist in my category is going to be one of the greatest duelists of all time. This is basically where everybody wants to be. Anybody up here has transcended that, so that's very impressive. A, which is going to be a top tier duelist. Fantastic. They top tournaments. They're great. B tier duelist is an above average duelist. They could probably top a tournament, but they're probably like an underdog. They're not as consistent, but they're good. They're above average. C is average. These are all the average duelists. These are kind of like fodder enemies kind of thing. They can keep up with the characters, but most of the time they don't expect them to win big duels. D is bad. If you're in D category, I think you're a bad duelist or you didn't duel anywhere near enough for me to make an assumption about how good you are. And trash can is self-explanatory. These people are bad duelists to the nth degree. Uh, they should quit. Let's get started. Notice we have multiple seasonal versions of characters because characters go through some characters, go through some big deck developments and some big character developments. So it can change the way that they play. So let's get started with Yugi season one. So season one Yugi, this encompasses everything through the first few episodes where he duels against Kaiba all the way through to Duelist Kingdom. So it, we're going to take characters at the end of that season. So this is Yugi at the end of season one. He's beat Pegasus and that's kind of where we're looking at his character development. So uh, Yugi has a lot of great, great feats. He beats Kaiba. Uh, Kaiba, fun fact, he was, I've checked my notes, the Japanese National Duel Monsters champion. Uh, so though it wasn't an official duel, he beats him. So technically he beat the Japanese National Duel Monsters champion. So uh, that is a fantastic feat to do. He beats Pegasus. He basically beats every single person on Duelist Kingdom. However, something that does happen to him is he has Exodia to start off. This is his grandpa's deck that he was given. Uh, and he has a big chunk of his power taken away when he goes to Duelist Kingdom. Those Exodia cards, they get thrown into the ocean. So that's a chunk of his power. He has to readapt and create a deck more closer to him. Uh, and with that, he's able to do very, very well. Um, I don't think he has transcended into the uh, S and double S's here. He's a fantastic duelist. Yugi, of course, is the main character. But I think right here, with the power level of decks and everything that are available, I think... Yugi is the top of A tier here. I know it seems weird not to throw him into S and double S. Obviously, when you... I'll just show you this now. Yugi season two, season three, he's an S tier character. But I think there's a progression with Yugi's dueling. And I do think he gets better. And I think his decks become more strategic. And I think he's the highest A tier character we're going to get in there. So keep in mind, A is top tier. So that's absolutely fine. So now we move on to Yugi Season 2, Season 3. Uh, season 2 and 3 encompass the whole Battle City arc. And then there's the Virtual World arc, like, sandwiched in between there. So Season 2 starts with Battle City. Season 3 ends with Battle City. And in between that is Virtual World. Yugi gets such a huge power boost in this season. He gets, well, his Battle City deck. He has to be more strategic because of the new rules and everything like that. He gains Slide for the Sky Dragon. Then he gains Obelisk. Then he gains the Winged Dragon of Ra. I mean, he's an S-tier character. It's like, he ends the series as probably the pinnacle of strength that he is. When I think of Yugi, most of the time, I think to Battle City Yugi. And I think he is perfect right there. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty easy. Uh, Yugi Season 2, Season 3 is an S-tier character. Now, this is interesting. Yugi Season 4. First thing that happens to Yugi in the Oracalcos arc is he loses all three Egyptian God cards. They get ripped from him. So that's a chunk of his power taken away. Also, he has a relapse where all of the stuff he's learnt throughout these seasons, he gives into the darkness. He gets given the Seal of Arikalkos. He doesn't trust in his own dueling ability. He feels like he has to rely on it. He activates it. And I think, honest to God, he relapses so much that he drops down into A tier. But he learns from his mistakes. He goes for a character journey. He develops himself. He gets Yugi back. Oh, yeah, Yugi gets, Yugi gets taken away from him. So that's even more reason why he gets weakened but he gains the legendary dragons cards 
He gets Yugi back. He beats Darts. Keep in mind, he lost to Raphael as well in this one. So I think that's another reason why he dropped. However, at the end of the series, after getting everything back... He's back at S. Would I put him ahead? Is he stronger than he was in Season 2, Season 3? Um, he's got his Egyptian gods back here. Mm. I think we can leave him like this. They're probably on the same power level. I'd say these two are equal again. Beating an infinite attack monster is uh, a great feat. And I think that's pretty good. So keep in mind, by the way, because we're doing the anime, uh, we're considering all filler uh, canon in this degree. So yeah, this is technically canon in terms of the anime so uh season five yugi dawn of the duel um yugi transcends to such an insane power level he doesn't duel very much in season five it's a lot about discovering who he really is and everything but we get the final duel don't we and yugi has become so op he doesn't even need to look at the cards he draws fate will just give him the cards he wants he's literally just playing Yu-Gi-Oh like this and I think this man is a double S character. At that point in the series, at the very end of the series, he was unstoppable. I think only one person ever could beat him. And they do do that. And we'll talk about that when we get to it. So I think those are the perfect places for the main character of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. He starts off as a top tier duelist. He transcends into one of the greatest duelists of all time. The king of games if you will and then finally he ends the series as something even beyond that um he ends as a, a legend basically so i mean that's perfect uh, then we get some spin-off yugis we get yugi from the pyramid of light i don't quite know when the pyramid of light is set but he's got all three egyptian god cards uh kaiba has been humbled so it's after battle city but before dawn of the duel so um i don't love his deck in this one he, he kind of gets handled a little bit. To be fair, Kaiba's playing a very specific deck to counter him. I think Pyramid of Light Yugi is here. I think they're all kind of equal in strength. But he's playing that new Sorcerer card. He's playing, like, Waterpan. He's playing the Jax Knights. Um, but he didn't really add anything too significant to his power level there. So I think that's perfect for him. Uh, Bonds Beyond Time Yugi. You're going to have to tell me where this takes place. Because I have absolutely no, no clue whatsoever. Um, where, where would he be? He's dueling alongside Jaden and Yusei Fudo. So his deck has a lot more like modern-y kind of cards. To be fair, he hard bricks. He hard bricks in this duel so badly. Um, I'm going to put him here. I think there are Yugi's. Uh, we've got one more Yugi to go. Oh, no, we don't have any more. That's all of the Yami Yugi's. Uh, so they're all our Yami Yugi's. I'm kind of happy with that. I can kind of live with that. I still think this is peak Yugi. I don't... He doesn't have the Egyptian gods here. He does have the Egyptian gods here. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, okay, moving on next to the rival of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. This is uh, Kaiba. Seto Kaiba. Kaiba is an interesting character because he relies too much on power and he has a fixation on the perfect victory. And that will humble him a lot throughout the series. He's so... He has... Game-winning opportunities sometimes in duels. The best example is the Pyramid of Light duel. He can win, but he wants to win in a specific way to really show he's the best duelist. And it always costs him. He never seems to learn his lesson until the very end. Um, I think Season 1, Yugi... Uh, sorry, Season 1, Seto Kaiba is... He's either the bottom of A or he's B. So, by the way, uh, Kaiba has a feat. He's the Japanese National Duel Monsters champion here. Uh, you could call him the King of Games. That could be a similar title uh, if you want to give him that. So, um, I'm going to give him low A. The lowest A, probably. Um, his deck is relying too much on power here. He needs to learn a few things. And I, I think that's as good as he gets. Well, to be fair, we're going to the end of the series as well. So, he gets beat a lot, though, in Duelist Kingdom. He gets beat by Pegasus. Um, I think that's the only duel he plays uh, while he's over there, actually. He gets handled quite well by Pegasus. So I think he's all the way down here. So when we put more characters in, I think that'll make more sense. So I'll leave him. I'm tempted to leave him top of B, but we'll leave him A for now. Uh, Kyber Season 2, Season 3 is peak Kyber in my mind. With Oblish the Tormentor, I love his Battle City deck. It's so good. Um, this man is an S tier character here. He is virtually unstoppable. Um,. Yugi had to go all out against him. 
their gods played. <sighs> he was able to beat his father, who was playing uh, Exodia and Exodia Necros during the Virtual World arc. He beat Lecter, who was using a Jinzo deck. Not a great feat. He theoretically could have beat Noah Kaiba. I did a dual analysis video on it, but it's a funny one. He might not have been able to. Noah threw out Mokuba to tank the attack. So yeah, he would have won. So he could have beat Noah. I'm going to put him right next to Yugi here. Just under Yugi. I mean, is, is he under all the other forms of Yugi though? I mean, I still think these two are the, their peak. They're all so close. They're like neck and neck with each other. I think that's fine. We'll put that above Permanent Lights. In fact, yeah. I think that's... That's good there. Uh, then we have Kaiba from Pyramid of Light. Why have we gone straight to Pyramid of Light? We'll do Kaiba Season 4 first before we do that one. So Kaiba never gives in to the, uh, the Seal of Orichalcos. Uh, he beats Alistair, which I I didn't really like Alistair very much, so I don't really rate that too high. He loses against Darts, but he bestows Yugi the win kind of thing. Like, here's my last card. I'm going to leave that face down. You use that. You win this duel, Yugi. There you go. I think Kaiba here is probably the same level as Yugi, but just under. So we'll go with that. It seems weird to think that like a later Yugi would be worse than a prior one though. I don't know. I guess they don't have the... Yeah, he's lost his Egyptian God card here, so he's definitely lost some power level. But he did... He, I guess technically they all lose their legendary dragon cards at the end of the series as well, so... Yeah, uh, I'll stick with that. That's fine for me for now. Uh, Kyber Pyramid of Light. Kyber Pyramid of Light uh, relapse is so hard. He's so bad. Um, he wants the perfect victory. He literally has like game winning cards. Um, and then he throws. He fro I'm 99% I'm sure he froze the duel. And he forgets to count one of his dragon monsters in the graveyard during that duel. I know that's like a, an out of duel shenanigan kind of thing, but uh, I'm going to leave Kyber Pyramid of Light there. Uh, Kyber Season 5. Kyber doesn't really duel in the final season of Yu Gi Oh! Um, but I am, has he increased in strength here? Um, I would say he's maintained his season four power level. Now, what's interesting, I think Kaiba was going to lose against Bakura in Dawn of the Duel. That duel gets interrupted before they can finish. And I'm really curious to see if that would have happened. I probably should have checked that out. I'm going to put Kaiba there. Um, by the way, if you're a Kaiba stan, uh, I'll, I'll show you something really interesting in a second. So next we have uh, Yugi Dark Side Dimensions, Kaiba Dark Side Dimensions. I'll get to those two in a bit. Um, I'll show you what I mean with those. So Yugi Season 1. Now I'm going to tell you something about Yugi. Yugi and Yami Yugi Season 1. They are the same character. I think they both have the exact same dueling ability. But the confidence that Yami Yugi gives Yugi makes such a difference in dueling that I think... Yugi, Yugi's a great duelist. He's always said to be, like, he's just fantastic at great games. He's a jack of all trades, does really well at anything he puts his mind to, if it's a game. Um, But I think he might just be a above average duelist. He's an above average duelist, maybe the, top, the best above average duelist you can get. Yami Yugi takes over, pushes him into a top tier duelist. I think that's fine. I think if this Yugi and this Kaiba dueled each other, pressure would have got into him. He would have lost. These two dueling each other, Yami Yugi comes through. Um, I've got season two, three, and four Yugi. Yugi is basically a cocoon for this series, uh, those three seasons. He's gaining knowledge. He's learning from the Pharaoh. He's starting to get his own strategy kind of thing that is separate to the pharaohs we don't see him duel very much which is a big problem but we see him duel people like bandit keith which is pretty awesome um he's able to beat him and he's cheating as well but you get to see him playing against uh i think he gets to have a couple turns against joey wheeler when he's possessed by yami um and we don't really get to see him duel much in season four we see like a fake version of him um but i think this yugi is probably we say he's better than season one yugi yeah i'd say this is a step up he is a top tier duelist here but he's not transcended yet yeah waking the dragons i think he's he's literally right on this line and then this is where season five yugi comes in 
And Season 5 Yugi is a double S character. Now, it's weird for me to say that because I want to put him here. How can you put him here? He beats this Yugi. Well, I think Yugi is the only person that could beat the Pharaoh. I think the Pharaoh is such a good duelist that anyone he would have faced, he would have beat. But Yugi knew the Pharaoh so well, he knew that he should have put that Gold Sarcophagus card into his deck and put Monster Reborn in there because he knew that the Pharaoh would do that. So that is knowing your opponent, really, isn't it? Rather than your own dueling ability. Don't get me wrong. Yugi does some incredible feats in that final duel. Takes down all three Egyptian God cards single-handedly without an Egyptian God card. No, you're right. Yeah, it's definitely he's definitely an SS character. Um, it's weird. I should do that, really, shouldn't I? I feel like in a match between these two, this is the order they would be in. In a match against a hundred random people, I feel like this is the order. I don't know. It's the amount of adversity that he has to come up with. Literally, he's playing an opponent that can will cast up his deck. All right. I'll give you it. Yugi, you can have the top S, double S spot for that one. I'll give you it. I think he's earned it. Okay, this is the, the bit I've been looking forward to. Dark Side of Dimensions, the movie. Yugi Dark Side Dimensions, Kaiba Dark Side of Dimensions. I think these two characters are both double S tier. I think they're fantastic. The thing is, though, I think Yugi has really cemented here that he is the greatest duelist. And I think he's even better than his Season 5 form. I think if this Yugi played against Yami Yugi in Season 5, I reckon he would have won um, as well kind of thing without needing to rely on like if he knew his deck now if we ever got a dark side dimensions yami yugi we only get like a little flash of him um that would be a completely different story i don't know how much yami yugi has grown in strength in the afterlife um and i think dark side dimensions kaiba has slivered up in the ranks does that seem insane to me does that seem insane to you i think dark side dimension yugi or kaiba have become better than the end of series, Yugi and Yami. It's hard one to say. I mean, you could probably make a case for that and that. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go with that. I do think this is this is Yugi at his peak. This is the best version of Yugi. This is the best version of Kaiba. I, I'm honestly tempted to put him a little bit higher than these, but... He wills a god. Fate. We'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. That's fine. We'll leave that for now. Uh, honestly, these are kind of interchangeable with some of this, but I'll let you guys uh, have a comment on that. Joey Wheeler Season 1. Oof. Um... <sighs> Joey starts off here. In his first duel. And then he gets here after a couple duels. And then I think at the end of Duelist Kingdom. He ends as a above average duelist. Somewhere around here. The problem with. Well the problem with Joey with season 1 is. He has a small reliance of luck based cards. I, I, he's not playing the graceful dices here. Or the skull dices. But he is playing time wizard. Which was given to him by Yugi. Um, so his reliance on luck really hurts him. His deck building, which will come into play a little bit later, is not great. But he's a fantastic learner and he has, like, the best endurance. He's willing to just power through. Um, so I think he is right here. Keep in mind, Joey is a third place finalist in uh, Duelist Kingdom. So I think he's uh, an above average Duelist at the end of, the uh, end of Season 1. Uh, Joey Season 2, Season 3... Um, is the end of Battle City. He comes third. Battle for the Bronze. He loses to Marek. Could have beat him. But Marek was playing in a weird way. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But he could have beat Marek. Did he beat Odeon? Or did Odeon just collapse? I forget. He... Uh, he beats everybody to qualify. He beats uh, Weevil again. He beats Esperoba. I think Joey Wheeler here is a top-tier duelist. 
and that's as high as I want to give him. It's honest to God, the his deck building. His deck building awful. He takes these cards. To be fair, they're all like given to him by like people he's played. But he has like legendary fisherman. No, not legendary fisherman. The whale. He has the the whale card in his deck. Insect queen. Like these awful cards. I'm like, get them out of there. And like, if his coin flips and stuff didn't work out for him, I he, sh he can't get any higher than that one. Um. So yeah, this is. A tier Joey. I don't... I know he comes third. I just don't think he's on the same level as these characters. I just... I can't give him that. I'm so sorry, Joey. You're a great character. But in season four, Joey Wheeler during the Steel of Calcos arc, though I still don't think his deck building got much better, he's still heavily relying on luck-based cards. Uh, based on that Valon duel that I watched, he dueled incredibly. He did lose to Joey... Uh, to my Valentine, though. Um... Has he transcended into S tier is my question. If he's in S tier, he's at the bottom of S tier. Is he one of the greatest tier? Season 4. Um, I'll give it to him. I'll let, him. I'll let you have that one, Joey. I think right here... So I think the big thing you need to take away is... Maximilian Pegasus, the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh! In the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX series... He's sitting down, he's explaining all the best characters in the Yu-Gi-Oh! world. He's like, uh, when I think of the best characters who duel, I think of Yugi Moto, Seto Kaiba, Joey Wheeler, and Asta Phoenix. But that's neither here nor there. So, I mean, like, if Pegasus considers him one of the top three duelists of his time, and he's always been, like, third place in two tournaments, he's always done really well, I guess he can, he should be an S-tier duelist here. Um, you'll notice I have a sad face for Joey Season 5 because he never duels. But we can just shove that there. Sorry. There. I, I assume he got a little bit better in this season. We never see him duel, so I can't really confirm that. I'm just going to have to go. I, I shouldn't really have made a Season 5 version of him, but uh, this is peak Joey. Just blend these two into one. I assume he got a little bit better. Who knows, though? I mean, he's lost the Claw of Hermos here. So, I mean, maybe his power level slipped, but we'll leave it like that for now. That's fine with me. <laughs> Taya Gardner, Taya, Taya, Taya. So season one, Taya. Taya only duels against my Valentine during Duelist Kingdom. And yeah, he, she doesn't do very well because my has to, my froze the duel so that Yugi can get some star chips and like knock him out his funk and everything. So I think she's not a trash can duelist. I don't think she's that bad. Like for someone that's never really dueled, she was just, she was just not great. I, she wasn't average though. She was definitely below average. If I had one in between here, she might have gone in there. But she's just a bad duelist to start with, uh, and her deck I did not like even in the slightest. However, season three, Taya, we have a completely different story here. Now, Taya, it's important to note, is not a duelist. She has learned her dueling just by watching her friends play. She gets put in this life or death situation. Forced to build a deck, she builds a deck. She um, plays against a competent duelist, Crump, and she wins. I think Taya Gardner is a natural duelist that just never sort of put her effort into learning the game. I wish she went on to play more Yu-Gi-Oh after this. I think she could have had a, like, a good potential to be really good. But she kind of just stops here. She would rather pursue her dancing career, which absolutely fine with me. You can do that if you want to, Tay. If your heart isn't in trading cards, that's fine. Um, but I think she <laughs> is an above average duelist. Am I crazy? <laughs> is that weird? I Would season three, Tay, be season one and season one Yugi uh, with their decks, though? Probably. Yeah, I, th I, th I think she's a low above average duelist. Why not? Let's treat her. Um, yeah, I, li I liked her in that duel as well. Uh, Tristan Taylor. C. He plays one duel. Um, it's a three-way duel against one person. I think all three of those duelists there were... I mean, they're, all three of them are struggling against one person. And unfortunately, they have a handicap, which is Serenity Wheeler, who doesn't know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And Tristan is forced to sacrifice himself in order to stop Serenity from losing the duel. So, if you think about it like that, you think he might be, like, okay. But if he was good enough, 
he wouldn't have even got let Serenity to get into that position. If you were so good, you could make up somebody else's weaknesses. I think that would push you into an above average duelist. But the fact that he couldn't do that, he was barely able to keep himself in the duel and like do well and things like that. I think it's just average. Average duelist. Sorry, Tristan. I know your voice gives you super strength, but tough. Uh, my Valentine. Mai is an interesting character because she's a filthy cheater when we get introduced to her, which to me uh, makes me think that she has no confidence in her own abilities. Even if subconsciously, I think if anybody cheats in the Yu-Gi-Oh! series, they don't truly believe in their dueling ability. Um, but she does have some accolades, I think, um, in season one. She beats uh, some dude... Rex Raptor. So Rex Raptor is the semi-finalist in Japan. So I think she's definitely an above average duelist. I'm going to say she's... I'm going to say she's here. Her reliance on cheating in her first duel really hurts her character. But she starts playing normally after that. She throws the duel to Taya just to be a nice, nice gal. Then she duels against Yugi. And I'm pretty sure Yugi doesn't take her seriously. And kind of just like, yeah, yeah, I'll play this, I'll play that. And then only after Mai starts putting some pressure on, he's like, okay, I have to take this duel seriously. Um, but I think the fact that Yugi even had time to just be like wishy-washy with the duel, uh, I think she's down here. A am I Blasphemous putting her below Taya? Would you, did you ever think you'd see that on a list? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, why not? I, th I think that's fine. I honestly rate Taya. Taya's grown on me. Season two and three, My Valentine. Um... Mai gets a very harsh journey in the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. She suffers a lot of loses. So she manages to qualify for Battle City. So there's a small feat there. But you can play against like fodder characters. And like you can farm that if you really want to. She gets into the tournament. She plays against Marek Ishtar. She does a cool strategy. Steals his Egyptian guard. Kind of cool. And then Marek's like, but you can't read. And she's like, no. And then she loses... And I think that's as high as I can put her. I don't think she's ascended into a top tier duelist here. I think this is as good as she gets. She's always going to be a runner up, I think, uh, in her ability. Um, she goes away. This is going to happen in the season four thing. She goes away and wins some tournaments and stuff. But she beat Rex Raptor back here. So she's at least... One of the best. I think she's about there. I think... I think the... My Valentine Season 4, however. Now, Mai has a relapse here. It's actually quite good that she's here because this works with her character. She, she believes that, like, she's been losing a lot and then when she starts playing in tournaments, she's winning the tournaments, but they're, like, low tier and she's, like, overshadowed by Yugi and Kaiba and even Joey to a degree. So it really knocks her confidence. She starts, like, smashing her trophies. And then she does relapse into Season 1 a little bit by cheating in a way. She accepts the Seal of Orichalcos and works for darts. So her power is augmented by this. And it's like the Margin Vegeta effect. Like, he is stronger, but it, you've had to use somebody else to achieve this power. Um, I think she gets into A tier here. She's definitely better than Season 1 Kaiba. She's definitely better than Season 1 Yugi. She's definitely better than Season 2, 3, 4 Yugi. Debatable. And technically, technically she does beat Joey Season 4. So really, I should be putting her here, but I'm not putting her in S class. Uh, because she beats Joey, feels bad, goes to fight Raphael, loses. Prior to this, she fought Valon, lost. So... I think she's a high A. She's a top tier duelist here. And that's that's where she ends the series there. And uh, yeah, I'm all right with that. Serenity Wheeler, uh, trash can duelist. She is not good. At, it's not her fault, though. She's not a duelist. She gets put into a dueling situation. Um, she tries to duel. She makes such a big blunder that Tristan has to sacrifice himself and technically loses his soul. But she does make up for it towards the end of the duel by doing like one of the winning plays. Uh, but she is aided by two of a duelist. So I think she goes in trash can. I'm sorry, Serenity. It's not your fault. You're not a duelist, but you're on the list. So gutted. Solomon Muto, the original owner of Yugi's deck, uh, had all five pieces of Exodia. 
Um, played against Seto Kaiba Season 1 and lost. Played against a dude called Arthur in a cave and could have won, but through the duel. And I think Arthur had Blue Eyes White Dragon back then, I think. Um, I think he is... Oh, oh, and then he plays in the World Championship arc, and he plays some weird, like, ancient deck, and it's kind of trash. He's a C-tier duelist. The deck he plays in that, um, he, he seems to really, like, impossible to play cards. Like, Exodia, you need all five pieces in your hand. No one's ever been able to play Exodia. And then he plays this, like, ancient dragon card, which, like, needs six cards of setup. And I'm pretty sure Arthur's in the middle of the duel when he's playing. He's like... I've never seen anybody perform this, and I think this might be Solomon Muto's first time ever doing it. He's just an average duelist, I think. All of his ta- uh, The lineage goes to Yugi. Like, that's fine. Bakura Season 1 is... weird. Um, see, unfortunately, Bakura rel relies on shenanigans in Season 1. He... He turns everyone into little figures, so he's playing against Yugi, and he's like, haha, if you kill these figures, they die for real. So, I, the shenanigans hurt him, I think, because he's not relying on his dueling ability too much. Uh, he plays like an anti-meta deck, which I thought was quite interesting. It's like, you disrupt your opponent's plays and stuff. Um, would I say he's an above-average duelist? I'd say he's like, above-average, but very bottom. I don't think he's as good as these characters over here, uh, personally. Uh, Bakura Season 2, though, I think we can sliver him up to above average still. I think he's had a huge power increase, um, but I still think his reliance on a little bit of shenanigans, only a little tiny bit. Um, he basically single, like, he obliterates Bones so much that if I put Bones as, like, an average duelist... Yeah, what's average again? B, so C. So if Bones is here, there's like a whole level above. So yeah, I think that's fair. So the problem is he only beats one person to get into Battle City. And then he just steals all their locator cards. So we didn't really have to duel many people. He loses against Marek. He loses against Yugi. I I, th I think he's just an, a, a really good above average duelist. I don't think he's top tier. I don't think he's up this level. I mean, he might be better than Season 1 Yugi and Kaiba. But we're comparing them to this time. Like... If this deck played against this deck, obviously he'd win. But, like, the cards at the time, I think these these were better duelists. So, yeah, you got, you got to consider the time period, by the way. Um, because, obviously, like, these got the most advanced decks. So, like, keep that in mind. Uh, Bakura Season 5. So, Bakura, Bakura doesn't really do much dueling in between here and there. And Season 5, he... I think he does slip into A. I think this is his peak. Now, apparently, he could have beat Kaiba. I need to properly watch that episode where he's playing against Kaiba because the duel gets interrupted. Kaiba plays Monster Reborn, bring back, brings back Blue Eyes White Dragon. He's got some insane monster on the field and the duel kind of just ends there. Um, I would say he is probably here. Hmm. Would he slip into S though? He could be bot top of A or bottom of S, I think. I'd say bottom of S maybe for Bakura Season 5. Yeah, I feel like this... <sighs> I think that might be fine for him. Yeah, it's fine with me. Uh, Rebecca Hawkins appears in Season 2. Now, I have a feat for Rebecca Hawkins here. So, Rebecca Hawkins is the youngest American dual monster champion at the age of 12. The prior American champion was Bandit Keith. So, theoretically... She's on the exact same level as Seto Kaiba. J Seto is the Japan national champion, and she's the American national champion. So, like, equal footing. I guess Japan's always been a little bit better at card games, though, so there might be, like, a discrepancy on, like, power levels there. But, I mean, you could put her there, right? Top-tier duelist? <laughs> yeah. Um, who else do we have? Who, who do we have for, like, tournament toppers down here? Um, I guess Season 1 might beat... Rex Raptor. Rex Raptor lost to Weevil Underwood. Weevil Underwood was another Japanese. Um, but hey, that's a regional champion, though, not a national champion. So I think that makes sense. That seems so weird to put her there. But on paper, that is technically 
where she should go. Um, and she would have lost to Yugi, though. Uh, season 2, 3, 4, Yugi. She lost to him. But he surrenders, just like they did in the, the thingy. Um, season 4, Rebecca. This is going to seem super weird. But I actually think she's, uh, she's pretty good. I think she... Could give Joey a run for his money from season 2 and 3. That seems crazy to you all, I know. But she's the only person in the Yu-Gi-Oh! series, to my knowledge, that actually uses some meta cards. Like, she's using things like Imperial Order to, like, shut down opponents' plays and stuff. And I think she even uses chains. She makes a reference to chains. She's the only person in the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! series to, to learn the card game. So, I think... Season 4 and Season 5, Rebecca can have those two. Now, she lost to Valon, I believe. Um, so she shouldn't go above Joey, which is good because he's up here. So I think that's fine with me. Um, I'd love to have seen a duel. My versus Rebecca. We could have uh, found that out, but I'm all right with that. I'll, I'll live with that. Duke Devlin is, I'm sorry to say, I think an average duelist. Uh, he did okay in his duel against um, one of the big five members. He did fine. He dueled against Joey and beat Joey from season... That's bef Oh, uh, where's this foot? That's between season one and season two, isn't it? Where does... Um... Oh, I've forgotten if um, Dungeon Dice Monsters bit was end of season one or start of season two. I think it's end of season one. So, I mean, technically you should put him here. Because he beat Joey. Uh, you know what? I'll give him an above average duelist. I say, yeah, he is better than uh, Joey Wheeler there. Because he did beat him. So, yeah, I'll give you that. Well done. Well done, Duke Devlin. Uh, Ishizu Ishtar. I really like Ishizu. I love her strategy. Uh, I don't like it in the real world because the actual Gravekeeper cards have come out now and they're milling all my cards and I hate it. But um, she is very, very good. She is is she top tier or is she one of the greatest <sighs> mm. she was going to beat kyber but kyber defied fate and won by making an insane play which is so, it was such shenanigans but she's using a millennium item which i haven't really been talking about but how many millennium item users we had i guess bakora doesn't rely on his ring too much during duels um I'd love to have seen her without. Mm, I think she's a high A. Yeah. She'd beat season four, my sure. She beat Rebecca. She beat season two or three, Joey. I think so. Ooh, it it kind of seems weird putting um, Yugi season two down here with this here as well. Oh, two, three, and four, Yugi. See, little Yugi's hard to place, isn't it? Like. I don't know how much development we've had between 2, 3, 4. Because he really, he shows his true power, I think, when he's playing against Bakora and he gets out Gandora. And that's what you know Yugi has developed as a duelist. So I think season 5, Yugi, yeah. That's fine with me. We can live with that. Uh, Arthur is bad. Didn't duel enough. Had one duel. He had a blue eyes white dragon. Gave it to someone. It got ripped. Gutted. Uh, Maximilian Pegasus. Maximilian Pegasus with the Millennium Eye. That's important to note. Um, he created the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters game. Uh, he played against Bandit Keith and beat Bandit Keith, but he used his Millennium Eye to do so. It annoys me that he's so reliant on the Millennium Eye, but I think this man is he the is either the top of A or bottom of S. Imagine Pegasus with a modern deck. With the Millennium Eye. And you can see your opponent's hands. I think he's bottom of S. Yeah. Which is weird to have season one. To be fair. It kind of makes sense. Because like obviously Yugi beat Pegasus. And like the whole thing of Shonen is beating people that are stronger than you. Pegasus on paper is stronger than Yugi here. And then through the combination of... Yugi and Season 1 Yugi, swapping places and everything, they are eventually able to beat Pegasus. So, I mean, that seems weird, doesn't it? Having, like, he does beat Pegasus. But I guess it's just, like, more on average. 
We could, we could drop him a tier. Maybe he doesn't f slip into S tier. I just think without Millennium Eye, that Millennium Eye is so broken. The fact that he loses with the Millennium Eye, though, might be an indication that maybe he's not as good as a duelist as he thinks he is. Because he's the creator, and his reliance on that eye was too much, so he might not be as great as a duelist. I think he's a high A. Yugi was able to triumph, and then when Yugi moves into Season 2, this is why he's like a whole tier above. Sure. Why not? Uh, Pegasus Pyramid of Light. So this is what happens, right? You have this eye. You're reliant on it so much. You lose the eye. Seto Kaiba, somebody who you was able to de defeat before over here. You drop a whole tier. And you don't just drop a tier. I think you drop all the way down. Ooh, would Taya, Taya versus Pegasus. Yeah. I think there. I I, 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 I think Pegasus, because he's the creator of the game, that doesn't necessarily mean he's the best at the game, right? It just means he has like so much knowledge on it and things. Um, yeah, I think he really lost power in Pyramid of Lights because he lost his eye, unfortunately. Very sorry. Weevil Underwood, one of the biggest cheaters in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, threw five pieces of Exodia so he didn't have to deal with it during a tournament. Stuck a Parasite Parasite card into somebody else's deck. Uh, pretended to rip someone in half so that the their other person... Uh, he's... Uh, then again, he does have the feat of being the number one regional Duel Monster champion in Japan. Uh, which isn't national champion, regional. Uh, so I think he's just... He's just a solid B. It's a solid B duelist. Um, I'm kind of happy with that. She beat Rex, but would she have beat Weevil? That's the question. I'm not too sure. Uh, Weevil season two... Doesn't learn the error of his ways. Carries on being absolute disgusting human being. Um, I I would say he just, he doesn't grow as a duelist at all in the uh, the time skip here. Stays exactly where he is. However, he realizes this, and then we get the Seal of Oricalcos Weevil. Except the Seal of Oricalcos. I think this pushes him up to maybe high B. Is he beating Battle City? Bakora? I guess the Silvari Calcos is pretty strong, though. How much would that amplify you by? Would she... Would he beat... Would he beat My Valentine? Season 2 and 3. Mm. I think he still would lose against My. I think that's it. He's got this much of an increase by getting the Silver Calcos. We might as well do Rex Raptor as well. So Rex isn't as good as um, Weevil. Joey does beat Rex. Uh, so Rex is the runner-up in that tournament. And then Mako Tsunami, which we're going to do in a bit, is the third place person. Um, I think on paper, Rex is the better duelist than Joey. But Joey was able to overcome him in the end, I guess. I probably should put him higher. We're, we're talking about the end of the, se the season, aren't we? I'm going to go like that. So Joey's above Weevil. Weevil's above Rex. And then we've got Season 2 Rex, who I don't think duels on screen. Um, I guess Season 2 Rex would beat Joey. I assume he got the tiniest sliver better. Um, I always preferred Rex to Weevil for some reason. He never seemed as bad until he did this. So you got Rex and Weevil right there. That's fine with me. Uh, Mako Tsunami... Had an interesting strategy. I quite liked his strats with the uh, the Umi control tornado wall uh, using the, the sea creatures. But he had to duel on his own turf. Uh, otherwise, it was a massive inconvenience. Uh, so season one, I would say probably an above average duelist. He's the third place regional finalists. Mm, I think he's there. And I think season two Mako, he probably had a little bit of a power boost because he's playing some... Uh, oh, no, he played T Tornado War in uh, Battle City. There. Mako versus Duke, who would win? I wonder. Yo, Mimic of Doom. So, Mimic of Doom, if you don't know, is uh, Ghost Kaiba. He can become other people. 
he basically had Kaiba's deck and was using Kaiba's deck and pretended to be Kaiba, pretending he was a spooky ghost. Um, weirdly enough, they had to cheat to beat him. Like, Kaiba hacks into the mainframe and starts making his blue eyes white dragon start, like, getting weaker and weaker. Yugi's playing against him is just like, hmm, all right, then I see nothing wrong with this. I'll just attack into it. It's not like, oh, there seems to be a fault with the system. Let's uh, let's start this all again. Uh, he, I mean, he theoretically could have beat Yugi if um, the thing wasn't playing up. He's definitely better than Weevil. Oh, is he better than Weevil? He doesn't really have his own strategy. It's hard to base it because he's using Kyber's decks. It's really Kyber's deck. So I'm just going to say he's an average duelist amplified by whatever deck he's playing with. So, average. He'd probably beat Tristan. He'd probably beat Grandpa. That's fine with me. Uh, Panic. Panic is actually a decent duelist. Uh, very scary. Tries to burn people alive if, if he loses, though, which I'm not a huge fan of. He beats my Valentine soundly. So, he's all the way up here. So, he's an above average duelist. Um... I think he would have beat Joey if them two had a duel. I'm kind of happy with that. I think Panic's... Panic's fine there. Good, good. Bandit Keef! The biggest cheater of them all. Uh, season 1... Cheats so much. Um... It's that reliance on cheating. I... He... He wins a tournament and then... Like, I, I don't even know if he cheated in that tournament. It's hard to say because he's, like, so reliant on it. It's like his whole whole deal. I think he's an average... Honestly, I think he's an average duelist amplified by cheating. But I guess he finished a tournament. It depends. If he's uh, an average duelist who amplifies his dueling by cheating in tournaments, then he's here. If he played that tournament, got humbled by um, Pegasus, and then started cheating after that, then I don't mind him being here. Um, I guess he... I guess he would beat Mako. He lost to Yugi. Sorry, he lost to Joey. Mm. I'll put him here. I'm going to say he knows what he's talking about, but the, the reliance on cheating is just not on. Uh, we have Season 2 Bandit Keef here. Technically, he's dead in the manga, but we're talking about the anime. He's alive, but he's just possessed by... Um, uh, Marek. So he loses to Yugi. Little Yugi without anything. Uh, how much is Marek boosting his abilities, though? And he's still cheating. I think he's down here. Possessed Bandit Keef. Even there, I'm not too sure. It's just the reliance on cheating I just do not like. Uh, Bones is a bad duelist, I think, personally. Uh, he's an average duelist. He's, he's the example. The perfect example of average. Um, yeah, he has to be, like, talked through plays by Bandit Keith. So I think that's as good as he gets, really, in Season 1. Uh, Bones Season 2, however, uh, gets murdered by Bakora right here. And I think Bones was just there. That's his power level increase from Duelist Kingdom to Battle City. And Bukora was just on such a next level, because he's all the way up here. He just obliterates him. Ah, Para and Dox. Now, it's kind of a weird duel, because it's not really dueling, but it kind of is. But they rely on teamwork. I think individually they wouldn't be great. But since they only rely on teamwork, I think they are... Where's Panic? Because they're like player killers, aren't they? You, This one, this one, and this one. They're all doing the same thing. They're trying to knock people out of tournaments. Um, they, like, they lost to Joey. So, I think that's fine. I wonder how Mai would have done against them. They were very reliant on that Gate Guardian card, wasn't they? Plus, Gate Guardian is not good. However, they've had new support now. Oh, I don't think she... I don't know. Season 3 tier? See, Yu-Gi-Oh! is weird to make tiers of because, like, it's not like power levels. People progressively get in stronger over the course of a series. Like, there's so many different factors between seasons and things it's really hard to say um i'll leave him there that's they're better than weevil though that's fine and again don't judge them by their decks that they have at the time just imagine they got modern decks marik ishtar marik's a weird one 
Marek's a good duelist. He so heavily relies on out of duel things. Every time you lose life points, you lose a part, a portion of your body. Every time you lose life points, you lose part of your mind. Every time you lose life points, your partner's going to lose part of themselves. Um, but... I mean, every time he possesses one of his mind slaves and duels through them, he loses. Which is not great dueling ability. But he beats Bakura Season 2, so he's definitely above Season 2 Bakura. And then he loses to Yugi, and he would have lost to Joey Season 2. So I think Yugi, uh, Marek, it's weird, but he has an Egyptian God card. He loses it at the end of the series. Hmm. Fun fact, it was stated that Ashizu beat Marek in a duel. So that's kind of interesting. So, Marek beat Season 2 Mai as well. <laughs> Is it weird to put a Shizu ahead? I'd love to have seen more duels with a Shizu. Who would I be more scared of in a duel? Pegasus reading my mind and knowing all the cards that I have in my hand, or Marek Ishtar... Making it so that every time one of my monsters is blown up, um, I feel the same pain as them. Uh, honestly, I think I'd be more worried about Pegasus. That seems weird. These are final antagonists, though. Both top tier duelists, though, I think. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. That's fine. Odeon uh, is fine. He's an above average duelist. Probably like down here. I think he'd beat... I think he'd beat Taya. I think he'd beat Rex and Rex. He'd beat Paradox Brothers. He'd beat Bandit Keith. He'd beat Season 1 Joey. He'd beat Panic. He'd beat Season 2 Rex and Weevil. He'd beat Mako. He'd beat Duke. Would he beat Pegasus? Sure. I'll put him there. Eh, he'd beat Bandit Keith. Uh, he'd probably... He may lose to Weevils. The Weevils of the world. Keep in mind, Weevil and Rex, they're only amplified by that Silvary Calcos. Uh, they're still not good duelists. That's like the end of their career there. Uh, these two never duel. That's a shame. Uh, Seeker. Seeker's a fun one. Uh, he was the one that played the fake Exodia cards. Uh, he had three copies of every single Exodia. He had three copies of like Graceful Charity, Pot of Greed, Upstart Goblin, all those kind of things. And he still lost. Um, so he is a bad duelist. He had like a broken deck. And he, he did. I'm tempted to put him in trash can. Imagine having all three pieces of Exodia and like the most stacked broken deck ever and still losing. Uh, he's just bad. He's just a bad duelist. Yo, Arcana. Uh, Arcana's a fun character. Uh, he's above average. Would he beat Bakura at all? Probably not. Would he beat Mai at the end of the series? Probably not. Um, I think he might give these two trouble. His deck was okay. Probably wouldn't beat Odeon though. I don't like Weevil and Rex here, but I mean, they've been... Yeah, they're fine. They're fine. Yeah, I think Arcane is okay there. With his fake Dark Magician, kind of cool. Um, just wish he didn't rely on um, chainsaws cutting people's legs off. Uh, Strings. Strings, you'd think... Strings has an Egyptian God card. Um, he had Sly for the Sky Dragon. He was doing very well, getting, like, infinite attack points and everything. Uh, and then he lost because he's playing against Yugi. Uh, Strings is a average player. Why? Because he didn't realize he was getting done until, like, he didn't draw any more cards. So Yugi's done a play where he keeps special summon a monster. Um, <clears throat> Strings keeps drawing and Slive's attack keeps going up. And he's like, ha, 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 I'm drawing. Look how strong my monsters are getting. Stronger, stronger. Oh, huh? I've run out of cards. He didn't notice until like the final card got drew, which makes me tell, makes me think he doesn't know what he's doing to a degree. And like, he boosted Slifer up too much. Like, there's a point where like 8,000 attack points is probably fine. Anything above that is like, you don't really need that. So I think he's just an average duelist. He'd beat Bones with Slifer. He'd beat Tristan with Slifer. He'd beat Solomon with Slifer. He'd beat Mimic with Slifer. And he'd beat Bones season two. So 
I think he's fine. He's just amplified by one card. He's just a bad duelist, though. Um, Loomis and Umbra playing against Kaiba and Yugi. Now, Kaiba and Yugi at the start of that duel, because it's a tag team, they were not co cooperating whatsoever. Whereas these two have pre-built decks to complement each other. And they're communicating with each other, even though the opponents can't do it. And they still lost. So I think they're like a low, above average. Even above average is kind of like pushing it. They still lost. I think they're just... Uh, they're av top, the top of average. They're fine. They didn't do much. Uh, Noah Kyber. Uh, Noah. Noah, Noah, Noah. Plays a Shinato Arc deck. His deck was a bit weird. Uh, kind of a mix and match of everything. Uh, but he just played the Spirit Monsters in the latter half when he plays against Yugi. He beats Kaiba, but he has to use Deceitful Methods to do it, and he would have lost. And then he loses to Yugi. Um, but he was strong. He was a very strong duelist. I think he, and like, uh, as a main antagonist, um, I don't think he's as threatening as Marek. Um, would he beat Ashizu in a duel? Would he beat my Season 4 in a duel? I wonder. Um... I don't think he's that good. I think there. I think there. Is that weird? I don't think he is the best duelist in the world. He's just very clever. So I think I'm, I'm fine with Noah being there. Yo, Gozaboru Kaiba playing uh, Exodian Necros. So this is season three. So these two dueled. Kaiba beat him. I would say Ghost Boru is maybe a bit bottom of B. I mean, it's shown that Ghost Boru is smart. He was a, a chess champion, so he knows strategy. And obviously, he was uh, very good with business. Not as good as Kaiba, though. Um, the, the idea that Season 1 Kaiba couldn't be just Ghost Boru in general, though, is interesting. Um, I think I'm fine with him being there. He's above average. But he's not really a duelist. So it's fine. It's, he's absolutely fine there. What am I talking about? It's fine. Okay, we've got the big five now. Let's uh, let's slap these up. So Crump. Crump is the penguin dude. He plays against uh, Taya and loses. Where is Taya now? Show me Taya. Taya is here. You know what? I, I honestly think... So the big five, right? They're not really duelists. They're businessmen that are forced to duel in order to get what they want. So I think all five of the big five are average duelists that are good. Now, the only one to win their duel was Nesbitt. Johnson had to really hard cheat... So I think he's actually quite bad. Because um, he still loses. He cheats and he loses. So actually, you know what? He's a bad duelist. Johnson. Uh, Gainsley was fine. Gainsley was really making Yugi struggle. He was okay. Lecter, I thought, played a really good deck. Um, Mr. Kaba. <laughs> he can go above Gainsley. Um, keep in mind, these are the two... They had to play against the hardest ones. If you rearrange these, they probably would have uh, done better. Like, I think these could have beat Joey. Nesbitt was the only one to actually win their duel, but he played against the three worst duelists out of the group. Mm, but he did win, so I think I'm fine leaving him at top of there. And then Crump was lost against Taya, who was, like, one of the first times dueling. So, I think... I think I'm okay with that. And then we have uh, Tristan here that is combined with all five of these. So straight away, you're getting all five of these abilities together along with Tristan. <laughs> um, where would they go? Uh, are they above average? Yes. Um, I would say they would be maybe here. Big five. They play a weird deck, though. Like, they're mashing up all their decks together to play together. They argue a lot. That's fine. I mean, it takes the combined might of Yugi and Joey. We can give them above average. They're fine, there. Uh, Darts. Darts is very strong duelist. Uh, is he an S-tier character? 
Yes. You know how broken his cards are? That, um, the eye, the eye that absorbs all damage is insane. Uh, the Shuneros is really, really good as well. Leviathan is okay. I don't really know how he lost against that. He does a massive misplay. I did a video on this. Um, we haven't gone into the S tiers in quite a while. I think Darts is a low S. Darts, Pegasus, Marek, and Noah. These are big final bosses. Was Darts better than Pegasus and Marek? In popularity, I do think Marek is better. As a duelist, I think Marek relies too much on torture and causing the opponent pain in order to just get them to just die during dueling. Darts did want to just beat someone with his insanely broken cards. So, I think Darts is a low S tier character, personally. Pegasus, uh, Pegasus could have got higher. I don't know. Uh, okay, we've got Domo. Raphael, Valon, Alistair, and Grimo. So I'm going to start with the one that I actually care. Oh, and uh, Arakalco's Soldier and Yugi Hatred. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, Arakalco's Soldier, they have... Yami Yugi has one duel against it. It makes uh, one of the monsters that Darts plays, which it just goes to the graveyard, it comes back, it gets stronger, and it just keeps recycling that. It's like Destroy a Phoenix Enforcer. Um, it's just, I think it's just an average, average, average duelist, really. It's just, it's, it's just a fodder character. That's all it is. Uh, Garimo. Garimo rocks up. Uh, plays against Yugi while Yugi has all three god, god cards. Or has he stolen them at this point? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, Garimo gets out Oblis the Tormentor and still loses. Uh, Garimo was not great. He's probably like an above average duelist, but not great. He's probably down here somewhere. Yeah, you probably be Kyber in a duel. Goes to Boru. No, I, I don't rate Grimo very much. Um, Alistair is the weakest out of the three main Doma characters. It's a shame, really. Um, I didn't like his deck. I didn't... I thought he had... His, his backstory is kind of sad, but it wasn't the strongest out of the three. Not the backstory matters in this. Um, but he was a good duelist. This is why Darts hired them. He probably was a top-tier duelist um, on paper. He probably could have... Alistair playing against Season 1 Kaiba, Season 1 Yugi... Um, he probably would beat these. Yeah, probably there. I'm happy with that. And then we've got Valon. Valon's really grown on me. Um, Valon beat my Valentine, confirmed. Would Valon beat Shizu? Now, he plays armor cards. Armor cards are a little bit gimmicky because you can only attack with one monster. He had so many opportunities where he could have gotten murked. Um, with an open field if someone was playing a little bit more of an explosive deck. But he has a great dueling... His dueling philosophy is always attack, which I think might limit him a little bit. I'm getting into S tier or anything like that. Um, Joey did beat him, so it's good that he's in the, the rank above. Would Valon beat Ashizu? I think I'm just... I like Ashizu too much. I think he, he went above. I really like that duel. I did a recent video on it. Raphael. The man, the myth, the legend. So, Raphael, only character in the Yu-Gi-Oh! series to officially beat the main character, Yugi. Um, I mean, you could throw him all the way up here if you really wanted to, but Raphael played against um, My Valentine, Season 4, beat her. Raphael played against Yugi, Season 4, and beat him. Then he played against Yugi again and lost. And then he played against Darts, I think, and then lost. No, I think he just got, um, he just had his mind wiped or something like that. Uh, I think Raphael is an S-tier character. I think he really made a big impact on the series. I think he's fine there. Not as good as Darts. Um, that's fine. That's absolutely fine, I think, there. Uh, Yugi Hatred. So, there's an episode where Yugi's been ripped out of Yami Yugi's body. Well, Yugi ripped out his own body. Um, and Yami goes to this, like, altar thing and reveals the collection of the dead specifically their hatred amassed and yugi appears and they both play the same deck and they both have like the seal of Arikalkos and stuff yami obviously won't activate it but yami y little yugi does uh it's it's a weird sort of episode but it's cool to see things like that seeing like an evil yugi and uh, we get to see like a little bit of how yugi would duel uh he's probably just a he's just a top top tier duelist not as good as uh, as his original form. And it's not really him. It's like a, it's just pure hatred. Sure, why not? Hatred Yugi, amplified by hate. Why not? You can just go in A. Uh, Siegfried von Schroeder. Now, he has an accolade, if I do remember correctly. Uh, Siegfried, 
European champions. So we've got Kaiba, who was Japanese national champion. We have Rebecca Hawkins and Bandit Keith, American national champions. Uh, and now we've got the European national champion, which is Siegfried. Siegfried von Schroeder. Now, I don't think he duels particularly well um, when we see him play. He, he, he does well, but he's not as good as Kaiba. And that's why Leon uh, has to take over. I don't think he's an S-tier character. I think Siegfried is probably up in the villain antagonist. Would Sieg Siegfried and Valon have a duel? I think Valon... I really do think Valon would win. I think Shizu might beat Siegfried. So, yeah. There's your American champion at the age of 12. I feel... I, I kind of feel bad. I feel like Rebecca might be able to take over Siegfried. I need to watch more episodes with him to sort of get a better understanding of how he how he dueled. I'm going to drop him there. I'm going to be cheeky. I don't think Siegfried is all that, you know. His little brother, is Leon, though, uh, is a prodigy duelist. Had Maximum Pegasus making some cards for him. The, um... The fairy tale archetype um, plays against Yugi, but unfortunately has to cheap. He he sweeps the world championship tournament. By the way, he does really well. Um, I think there. I'd like to have seen more of Leon. Make me a, a new Yu-Gi-Oh series. We've all got modern decks. Ah, hello, it's Rick from the world championship. So Rick, by the way, if you don't know who Rick is, Rick is the guy where the dual computer goes haywire. But before that, he's like, oh, hey, you're Yugi. I'm a big fan. Look, this is my deck. Yugi looks at his deck. He's like, oh, my God. Where's your spells and traps? He's like, I don't play any. I just love dragon monsters so much. I only play dragons. And then Yugi has to play with that deck. And he's like, okay, before I play this deck, I'm going to put one spell card in here. All right, that'll do. Uh, Rick is a bad duelist. Worse than Serenity. Okay, here we get to the absolute fodder characters. Vivian Wong, Balfrey, Abe the Monkey Man, Richard, Paul, Totony, Sergey, Shane, Ethan, and Jafar. So these are all the people that are in the World Championship arc. Um, I'm just going to put them all in above average, I think. Uh, Vivian being the best, I'd say Vivian can go... Vivian can go here. Nice guy. This is like the only one that got a little bit of character in there. I know nothing about you. I know nothing about you. You're a doctor. Good for you. You're a Sherlock Holmes. Good for you. You're a magician. Oh, there's two magicians, I think. Uh, you're a bodybuilder. Good for you. Shane. I, I feel bad putting him in there. You know what? I think they might be average. I mean, they're in a tournament. How did you get invited to the World Championship Tournament? Did you actually have to prove yourself in a duel? Actually, you know what? Change my mind. They're all average duelists. They're all they're just fine. Let's not inflate um, above average. There we go. That feels better. That feels a lot better, actually. Ethan, that might be a fist of the North Star reference. Jafar. There you go. The, the, yeah, that's fine. Anubis from the Pyramid of Light movie. He plays the Sphinx deck. Sphinx deck is not very good. He had to rely on Kaiba throughout the majority of the duel so he could get his body back and stuff. Um, did he give Yugi any sweat at all? After he made Andro's Sphinx Talaya or whatever it is? Not really. Uh, I think he's like... He's, I think he's just an antagonist. I think he's like maybe above average. I think he'd beat season two Bakura. Paradox from Bonds Beyond Time. Um, you know what? In com in contrast to everything, he might be a really good duelist because of the deck he has. He has a deck from the future. Like, you imagine Paradox playing, like, anyone. <laughs> um, he would absolutely curb stomp them because he could just special summon ultimate malefic monsters and then synchro summon. It's weird saying synchro summon in a duel monsters list, but they were kind of in, a, in the same movie. Um, is he an S-tier character, though? Is he on the same level as Darts? I think it's here. I'm going to give you that one, Paradox. I, I love the Malefics, so you, you get a win from me. Uh, Johnny Steps challenged Taya Gardner to a duel? No, t challenged Taya Gardner to a dance-off, and then Yugi took offense to that and challenged him to a duel. And then he got absolutely curb-stomped. Uh, you're just an average duel. Uh, 
Uh, dual computer. So this is the computer that Kyber always uses to practice. Um, the first time we see it, he gives it his deck and he's playing the Obelisk deck and he beats it. So you'd think it would be a average duelist. But then I'm going to assume that this gets developed into what we see in like the Pyramid of Light movie and the Dark Side Dimensions movie. So where it's actually fabricating Yugi to such a high level. Um, I think this dual computer is a top tier character. I know that seems crazy. Bottom of top tier, because it's dependent. It's like has to be inputted with like calculations and stuff. It's perfectly quaffed hair and things. So low A. Uh, D uh, KC Dual Tech 760. So this is the one that went haywire uh, and dueled. And it lost to a deck that had only dragon monsters and one spell. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, Esperoba, another massive cheater. Um, but he had Jinzo, which was kind of cool. Kind of cool. Um, I think he's a low above average duelists. He was good. He beat Rex Raptor. But he cheated. Wait, have I just put it in top tier? Sorry. I didn't mean that. He beat Rex, so he goes above Rex. I think he beat Mako. It's a shame. Like, he's got a decent-ish deck. I think if he relied on it more, he could have done better. Uh, Koji. Who's Koji? So, Koji duels someone, wins a card, and he's like, ah, oh, this card's crap. I don't want this. Kyber or Mokuba waltzes up, and I think Kyber duels him in an alleyway, summons Oblis the Tormentor, and absolutely wrecks him. Um, <laughs> he's an average duelist as well. <clears throat> Unnamed Rare Hunter. So, Marek's like, here, take the Winged Dragon of Ra, try and summon it. He tries to summon it, dies. Trash can. Uh, Magnum. This is the guy that like tried to marry my Valentine. My was like, all right, we'll duel. If you lose, I'm not marrying you. And he's like, okay, loses. He's like, you can come back. Try again if you're a better duelist than me. He comes back and then loses again. Uh, you can be a you're, a, you're a bad duelist. In fact, you're a I think, the, I, I think the compute. I think the compute is better. Yeah. Uh, Diva from Dark Side of Dimensions. Um. Plays against Kyber, loses. Now this is double S Kyber. He plays against this Kyber right here, um, and gets absolutely handled, even with like some alternative uh, dueling things. Uh, it's a shame because he's like a decent duelist though. Until then, Cubics are quite strong. Uh, I think he's a low top tier duelist. I think he's all the way down here. Uh, I think he beat the dual computer. I think he beat Rebecca. I think he beat these two Kybers. I think he beat Hatred Yugi. I think he beat Season 234. Mm, I think he beat Rebecca. I think he'd beat Alistair. I think he'd struggle. I think he's starting to struggle with these characters here. Diva, you can go there. Uh, I can't read what I've put. This is Millennium Ring Diva Dark Side Dimensions. So this is where he gets corrupted by the Millennium Ring. Uh, he plays against Yugi and Kyber. Loses against Yugi. Does well, though. I guess we can put him a little bit higher. I think he would probably... Probably there. He got a little bit stronger. Just a little bit. Oh my god, we're on the final one. Uh, this is Striped Sweater Duelist. This is who my Valentine beats in a duel. Uh, in Duelist Kingdom. Why is this guy in this, this list? Because it was at 99 and needed one more character. So Striped... Sweater duelist it is. Trash can, why not? Guys, that is my tier list done. What do we think of that? Uh, double S characters, aka the ultimate characters. Yugi Dark Side Dimensions, number one. Yugi Season 5, number two. Yugi Yami Yugi Season 5, number three. And Seto Kaiba Dark Side Dimensions, number four. I think that is absolutely fine with me. Uh, S-tier characters, the greatest duelists of all time. Yugi in Season 2 and 3, Kyber in Season 2 and 3, Yugi Season 4, Kyber Season 4, Kyber Season 5, Yugi Bonds Beyond Time, Yugi Pyramid of Light, Kyber Pyramid of Light, Joey Season 5 and 4. I would like to have seen more from Joey Season 5. 
Um, Bakura Season 5. Would like to have seen more from him as well. Uh, Darts and Raphael. Um, top tier duelists. I mean, we could... these. Some of these could slip into, uh, into S. I just think their reliance on shenanigans hinders how good they could be. Didn't use shenanigans. Didn't use that many shenanigans. A little bit. So this, I think this is what hinders them. Millennium Eye Pegasus. Probably one of the hardest people you could go against even in modern days if they know exactly what you're drawing. Marek Ishtar with the Millennium Rod can cause you so much serious pain in a duel. Uh, and has Lava Golem. Pretty pretty good card. And Winged Dragon of Ra. Pretty sweet. Uh, Paradox. Spawns Beyond Times. I think you'd struggle against him. Uh, Valon. Um, Diva. Ishizu. Mai, Noah, Leon, Siegfried. Uh, we don't need to go through all this now. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I feel like... Yeah. I'm happy with that. It's hard to tier list Yu-Gi-Oh characters, but I think we've done a good job there. Guys, let me know in the comment section below if you would do this any differently. I'll try and leave a link to this if uh, it's possible. So if you want to do this yourself and if you want to submit it back to me on Twitter, you're more than welcome to. I'll leave a link to that as well. So uh, yeah, that was my tier list for Yu-Gi-Oh Duel Monsters. If you want to see Yu-Gi-Oh GX, let me know in the comment section below. But other than that, thank you all for watching. Catch you later. Bye, everyone.